Did Spartans really toss babies off cliffs? Let's unveil the eight shocking truths and myths of Spartan warriors, from battlefield tactics to bizarre rituals in ancient Greece. Number one, Spartans were ruthless warriors who would fight to the death, no matter the cost. In movies like 300, Spartans seem like fearless fighters who never backed down from a fight, ready to meet their end in a blaze of glory. But let's uncover the real story. Spartans weren't reckless warriors charging headfirst into every battle. They were smart fighters who valued their lives. Take the Battle of Plataea in 479 BCE as an example. Here, they faced a giant Persian army and the odds were not in their favor. Instead of stubbornly fighting to the last breath, they retreated. It might sound surprising, but it was a tactical move. The Spartans knew when to step back, regroup, and strike again when the moment was right. This patience paid off. They returned to the battle when the Persians were weakened, helping secure victory. So no, Spartans weren't all about fighting till the end. They were skilled strategists who didn't throw their lives away needlessly. Number two. Spartan babies were thrown off a cliff if they were not considered healthy enough. In the land of Sparta, an ancient city of warriors and legends, a chilling myth has echoed through the ages. It's a story that has fascinated and horrified people for centuries. The notion that Spartan babies deemed unworthy were thrown from cliffs. But let's take a closer look. Was this truly a Spartan custom, or is there more to this story than meets the eye? Firstly, it's important to know that this myth is mostly based on the writings of one man, Plutarch, an ancient historian. He mentioned it in his writings, but it's crucial to remember that not all stories passed down through time are entirely accurate. Sometimes, tales get twisted and exaggerated. In Spartan society, babies were indeed put to a test, but the idea of tossing them from cliffs is likely an exaggeration. Elders examined newborns, and their health was assessed. If a baby was deemed too weak or sickly, they might not be raised as Spartan citizens. However, this doesn't necessarily mean they were thrown from cliffs. In reality, they may have been given to other families to raise or left to nature's course. Spartans were known for their toughness, but they weren't monsters. The decision about a baby's fate was likely made with consideration, not cruelty. Number three. Spartan women were as tough as Spartan men. In the world of ancient Greece, the Spartans stood out for their toughness. You might have heard a rumor that Spartan women were just as tough as the men, and there's some truth to that. But let's dive deeper. Yes, Spartan women were indeed strong and unique compared to women in other Greek city-states. They had a different life. While in many places women were expected to stay home and not do much, Spartan women were different. They were taught to be physically fit and were part of military training, like running and wrestling. These ladies didn't sit around knitting. They were out there training hard. But here's the catch. Spartan women, despite their toughness, were still not considered equal to men. They couldn't vote or hold political office, which Spartan men could. So while they had more rights and freedoms than women elsewhere, there was still a gap. Marriage was different for Spartan women, too. They didn't just wait for a man to propose. Instead, they could choose their husbands, and this was somewhat unusual in ancient Greece. They even had the power to own property and get a divorce if they wanted. So while Spartan women were indeed strong and had more liberties, they still lived in a society where men held the upper hand. Number four, Spartans ate black broth every day. In the land of ancient Sparta, there was a peculiar dish that often pops up in tales about Spartan life. It was called black broth. Now, some folks out there might tell you that Spartans chomp down on this gloomy-sounding soup day in and day out. But like many things in history, the truth isn't as simple as it seems. Black broth was indeed a part of Spartan meals. It wasn't made from magical ingredients, but from some pretty basic stuff. Pork, beef, vinegar, blood, and a sprinkle of salt. These ingredients mixed together to create a dark, brothy concoction. Now, while black broth was a staple in their diet, it's unlikely that Spartans slurped it up like cereal every morning. They had other foods on their plates too, like bread, cheese, and fruit. 
Variety was probably the spice of Spartan life when it came to meals. So where did the idea of this daily black broth feast come from? Well, some ancient writers mentioned it in their texts. They might have been exaggerating a bit to make the Spartans seem tougher or more unusual than they really were. Imagine if someone today said that all New Yorkers eat hot dogs every day just because they're famous in the city. It's a bit like that. In reality, Spartan cuisine wasn't all about black broth. It was more about keeping their bodies strong for battle and training. They had a reputation for being tough, and what they ate played a role in that toughness. Number five. Spartan men were not allowed to have sex with their wives until they were 30 years old. Some say Spartan men had to wait until they were 30 to wed. But here's the truth. There's no solid proof of this age restriction. What we do know is that Spartans believed in discipline and being battle-ready, and that might have influenced their decisions about marriage. Spartan men were allowed to marry whenever they pleased, yet they probably didn't rush into it. You see, life in Sparta was about military training and becoming the best warriors. Young Spartan men had to go through tough trials and prove themselves in battle before settling down. They needed to be strong, both physically and mentally, to protect their families and city. So, while there might not have been a strict rule about marrying at 30, Spartan men might have chosen to wait until they were older and more experienced. They wanted to be the best husbands and fathers they could be, and that meant being well prepared for the challenges that lay ahead. In Sparta, life was a balance between training for battle and preparing for family life. Spartan men understood that waiting a bit longer to marry could make them better husbands and fathers. Number six, Spartans had a unique system of marriage known as engies. In ancient Sparta, love and marriage were quite different from what you might expect today. They had a peculiar custom called engiesis, and it was anything but ordinary. Imagine a Spartan man who had his eye on a woman he wanted to marry. Instead of sending her flowers or asking her out for a romantic dinner, he did something rather bold. He kidnapped her. That's right. He would grab the woman and bring her to his house. Now, it didn't end there. Once she was in his house, things got even more unusual. The woman was asked to cut her hair short and wear men's clothing. You might wonder why on earth they would do such a thing. Well, they believed this strange ritual would ensure that their marriage would be fruitful and that their future children would be strong and healthy. You see, Spartans were all about producing strong offspring who would grow up to be great warriors. Cutting the woman's hair and dressing her like a man was seen as a way to symbolize this strength and ensure that their kids would be tough as nails. So, it wasn't exactly a fairy tale romance. It was a bit more like a tough training camp for both the bride and groom. They believed that by going through these unusual rituals, their marriage would be blessed with warrior-like children who would continue the Spartan legacy. In a world where love stories are often filled with flowers and sweet words, Spartan marriages stood out as an intriguing and unconventional way to start a family. Number 8. Spartans were subscribed to Antiquio. But on a serious note, I know it's annoying, but please leave a like and subscribe. Your contribution really means a lot to us. This channel wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. And as always, Thanks for watching.